All right, good morning, Destiny Community Church. I hope everyone have it, is having a great morning today. I know we are right now. We're prepared right now to, to step into the presence of God, regardless of where we are. In the comfort of your own home, we want to just step in right now and worship Him uh, because this is the day that the Lord has made. So please join us right now in worship from wherever you are watching. And uh, let's, let's really step into that presence this morning. and mercy, wisdom and strength. You can be trusted in all of your ways. We're singing out. Oh, 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 oh. You are holy. Oh, 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 oh. King of glory. Oh, 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 oh. All of heaven Come on, let's sing it out. Sing. Unto your name, glory and honor. Unto your name, wisdom and power. Unto your name, all of the saints sing praise. You're perfect in love Awesome in wonder, faithful and just Matchless in mercy, wisdom and strength You can be trusted in all of your ways we're singing out. Oh, 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 you are holy. Oh, 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 oh. King of glory. Oh, 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 oh. All of heaven and earth cry out. We sing. Unto your name, glory and honor. Unto your name, wisdom and power. Unto your name. All of the saints sing praise Unto your name, glory and honor Unto your name, wisdom and power Unto your name, all of the saints sing praise
Let's give him praise in this place. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's sing out, I raise a hallelujah.
that hallelujah, Lord. Over all the things, Lord, that is that may be haunting us right now, that is bringing us fear or panic, God, we raise that hallelujah all over that, Lord. Heavenly Father, let hope arise in our hearts. Let hope arise in our homes. Let hope arise in this nation, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. to me now speak to me I 
surrender to you God because you are God Lord you're the name above all names God Heavenly Father that all things will bow at your feet God that any foul thing Lord will be crushed right now in Jesus name all that fear Lord none of that Lord in our households God we, we loosen that peace Lord in our hearts God thank you Lord we receive that peace Lord Yeah. 
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never, your promise still stands. Your promise still Amen. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise this morning. Amen. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. We're, we're in the virtual house of the Lord this morning. Good morning, DCCI family and friends. Welcome to our first live stream service. We're excited to be able to continue gathering together, even in this virtual setting, to praise and worship, to hear the uncompromised word of God, and to continue giving him all the glory. Amen. Amen. You know, the apostle Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or pearl or sword? Absolutely not. He went on to say, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Paul said, for I am persuaded. I know that I know that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to let you know this morning out there at home or wherever you're streaming this from, that God so loves you. God so loves and there is nothing that can keep you from the love of God. Listen, family, this building may be closed, but the church of God is open for business. Can somebody say amen out there? I know right now in, in your social media platform, somebody's lifting some emoji hands up there. Somebody's putting an, a running emoji out there. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. We continue to rebuild, restore, and raise up the foundations of many generations. Nothing will slow the kingdom of God down. DCCI, are you still all in? Come on, I can hear you out there at home, and I know that you're all in. Yes. It is our time to receive the tithe and the offering, and I want to share the multiple ways for you and I to continue supporting the ministry in our giving. The first way is to go on to www.destinycommunitychurch.com forward slash give. The second way is that you can give through our DCCI app. You can download that from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. You can simply text to give, and the instructions are on the church website. You can give by mail. The address is also on the church website. You can even give by simply dropping off your tithe and your offering in the mail slot at the front door of the church. So head over to www.destinycommunitychurch.com slash give and prepare your offering. God bless you as you give unto the Lord this morning. Amen.
praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, why don't you just take about 20 seconds and give the Lord a great big thank you, praise, hallelujah. We got up this morning, and, and I realize and understand that situations are changing uh, almost by the minute, but I'll tell you what, God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. I want to talk to you about, uh, well, I'll tell you what I don't want to talk to you about, but before we do, I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we've submitted ourselves to you. Father, we know that you are glorified because pastors all over this, this world are finding ways to keep the gospel going out. That's our healing. That's our fortress. That's our strength. And we thank you, Father, that in this house we sense your presence. The Spirit of God that will lead us. The Spirit of God that will guide us. We bind and we rebuke every assignment that has been assigned to disrupt the service in the name of Jesus. And we combat it to go back to hell where it came from. Today there's a determination amongst us. There's a determination to lift up the name of Jesus. There's a determination to go about our Father's business. There's a determination to go about kingdom business. And we thank you for the opportunities, Father. So many opportunities that are, that are presenting themselves, ordained and assigned by you that oftentimes we don't have, even have time to think about what's going on. We're concerned about taking advantage of those opportunities to grow your kingdom. We thank you for that. We thank you for the peace and the joy and the faith in this house and in every household that is listening. In the name of Jesus, we release a supernatural blessing over your house. We speak the joy of the Lord over your household. That peace that surpasses all understanding that you would continue to live not out of fear, but out of faith. And that God be glory, glorified. That you continue to use wisdom and common sense and obey the law of the land, but not out of fear, out of faith, and out of a spirit of expectation. We love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let me quickly tell you what I am not going to talk about this morning. I am not going to talk about fear. I am not going to talk about this virus. I believe that, that both of them have uh, uh, already been uh, broadcasted all, all over the world. What we want to do today here at Destiny Community Church is broadcast the good news. Amen? So I want to share with you, because I believe that my assignment today is to encourage you and to inspire you. And I believe that part of that assignment is also to remind you. I want to remind you of who our God is. And so I want to share with you this morning on the faithfulness of our God. He's our faithful God. And I'll be reading out of Deuteronomy chapter 7. And it says, verse 6, it says, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people to himself, a special treasure above all the peoples of the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor chose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you, I, I love that. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out, of, with, a, out with a mighty hand and redeemed you, redeemed you from the house of bondage and from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is the faithful God. Do you hear that? The Lord your God 
He is the faithful God. And I want to, I want to remind you that uh, uh, he's done it before, he'll do it again, and he's going to do it now. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. Somebody say he's a faithful God. There, therefore know that the Lord your God, he's a God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. What we see here is that Israel is about to enter the promised land after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. This whole entire nation that left Egypt has now died in the wilderness except Joshua and Caleb who were the only two left that would enter the promised land. But before they enter into the promised land, uh, after 40 years of wandering, before they enter into the promised land, Moses delivers a, a, a series of sermons that were given to the nation of the Israelites that were born in the wilderness. This generation to whom Moses is preaching now did not know about the brick labors of Egypt. They did not know anything about sacrifice and suffering and being oppressed under the hand of Pharaoh. And they're about to enter a land, hear me please, flowing with milk and honey. Now you've got to get this. And any people that gets their hands on blessings without sacrifice or struggle have a tendency to lose appreciation, gratefulness, and gratitude. And so Moses reminds them and he says, you're about to come on houses that you didn't build. You're about to come on, on wells and vineyards, uh, vineyards that you didn't plant, wells you didn't dig. Uh, uh, and Moses says to them that the tendency will be that when you are full, it is then that you need to be aware because you'll forget the God who brought you out. And Moses tells the children of Israel, the, this new crowd, he tells them that they need to learn from the mistakes of the elders, uh, uh, that God brought them and they complained. God kept them and they murmured. God delivered them and they had no appreciation for it. And I need to say to you all this morning, all that you have, all has come from God's hand. Everything that you have has come from God's hand. Every good gift and perfect gift. I don't care uh, about your college education because it's not about that. It's not about your job skills. I'm not really impressed about uh, where you were raised because it's not about that or about how much money you make because the truth is that if the Lord doesn't keep you, if the Lord doesn't build a fence around you, if the Lord doesn't protect you, you could wake up one morning and lose everything you've ever worked for. But thank God for his grace Grace. Thank God for his faithfulness. Thank God for his goodness. And you ought to remind yourself that if, had not, if it had not been for God. Church used to sound different when I grew up in church. Church used to have a kind of a hum in the pews. Uh, nobody had to say anything. It was just a kind of noise that, that, that overwhelmed the congregation, because nobody had anything. Everybody was struggling, trying to make ends meet. We could call on one another for a stick of butter and three or four eggs until one could make it to the market because everybody needed everybody else. Everybody needed everybody. And that's one thing I love about church. And here's what I love about church that all week long we're called by our name. But on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning we are brother and we are sister so and so. And that brought a strange dignity and a sort of hum in our worship. That, and I believe that's missing now because so many of us are trying to forget where we came from. But please hear me. I don't want, I don't want to forget where I came from. I don't want to forget how good God has been to me. Never. 
I don't want to forget how I was raised, having to share one outhouse with so many other families, no hot running water, had to go out to an outside sink that was shared by the same number of families, bringing, having to bring the water uh, inside our small uh, little house that had a wood stove, uh, uh, wood uh, 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 stove uh, in it, and we'd set the water, the buckets of water over that uh, uh, to get them warm. And, 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 and I don't know if you had to do this, but we had to put a, a cloth uh, under the doors, the crack of the door to keep the cold from coming uh, uh, in. And we had to put a newspaper and cloth over the cracks in the wall to help keep the cold winter out. And I don't want any of my children to forget where they came from. Sitting around breakfast, praying before eating. And on Sunday morning, you had to go to church. There was no such thing as you were tired from Saturday night. We were going to church because we had to come and give God some praise because he had just been that good to us. But now here we are this morning. Here we are with two cars in the garage, clothes, so many clothes that we can't even decide what to wear. God's just been that good to you. And how dare you be a beneficiary of the goodness and the faithfulness of God, of all that God has done, and won't even give him any praise. Maybe you haven't been through enough. But some of you that that have been through the storm and thought and went through so much hell and high water, crying in the midnight hour. Some of us who regret the mistakes that we've made in our past, but God still kept us, and we don't mind testifying. God is faithful, and if you don't get anything else out of this word, just understand that God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God will show up. God will open a door. God will make a way. God will do it. God will see you through. Just for a minute, think about where you were and how many people God put in your life to encourage you in your downtime. How many people Doors did God open up while you were still in that mess. And in that mess, he was still faithful enough to come to rescue you. And you're in this church, you're hearing this message this morning, not because you're so holy, not because you kept his commandments so closely, because you did enough that you ought to be, uh, never mind. But in the Bible said, the steadfast, I wish the church would get back to being steadfast. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness towards us. God's faithfulness is demonstrated, first of all, in his passion for his people. The Bible said that he said his love upon you. He just chose to love you. I don't know if he really had to love you, but he, but he chose to love you. You didn't do anything for it. You would have never been able to earn it or merit it. You would never be able to deserve it. He just sets his love upon you. I think about that often, how God just blesses us with stuff we didn't even ask for. How God just keeps us and provides for us where well, we could have, he could have just cut us off. And when you go to bed tonight, you're not gonna think about that, about this. So let me tell you what's gonna happen. When you go to bed tonight, you might not even pray. You're so tired, you'll just fall in that bed and but God loves you so much that he keeps your heart beating anyway. And he keeps your blood flowing anyway. He wakes you up in the morning, if he pleases. He wakes you up in the morning 
He could have let somebody come in your house last night when you were sleeping. But God set his love upon you that all those sirens and all those ambulances and all those fire trucks that were running all over the city last night and none of them stopped at your house. Is God not faithful? Because God just sets, he just sets his love upon you and not because you did anything. He just so loves you. Because God just set his love upon you. He chose to love you. And this ought to make you shout. He loves you in spite of all he knows about you. And how many of you know God knows a whole lot about you? That TMZ ain't got no, 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 no stuff over God. God, that's a scary thought that God knows all about me. He loves you in spite of all he knows about you. I wish I had somebody to help me preach right there. He knows, I'm a, he knows I'm a crook. He knows I'm a transgressor. He knows I'm a sinner. And he still loves me. But you didn't have to take my word for that. Jeremiah 31.3, it says that God's love is everlasting. John 3.16, God's love is extensive. Verse 6 says that, 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 that you are chosen from the foundations of the world, meaning that you came in, but God chose you to come in. Oh, God. You came in, but God chose you to come in. God chose you. You, you, you came on your own, but you came on your own because he chose you. You came because he chose you. And that's why you came. You came because he chose you. Whoever will let him come. Whosoever uh, will let him come. And, and when you come, it's because God chose you. I'm glad God chose me. When a baby's born in your family, I don't care how it looks, unfortunately, you have to take it home. Whether you want it or not, that baby's yours. And those of us who are parents wonder sometimes if we picked up the right baby when we left that hospital. But no matter what it looks like, it's yours because it's, it's born to you. But when you adopt, when you adopt, you go choose what you want. Uh, let me see if I can help somebody here. I was born to Porfirio Elvira Gallegos. And they had to bring me home. But God chose me in spite of my past, in spite of my issue, in spite of the messes I got into. He loves me not just because I'm born, but because I'm chosen. He, he, he loves me. He, he sets his love upon us. His love is everlasting. His love is extensive. God loves the world. That whoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. That's God's faithful passion for his people. But I want you to see God's faithful performance for his people. He desires them, and verse 8 says, that because the Lord loves you, because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand. Now, let me share with you a thought. Prayer is so powerful that God is answering the prayers of people who are now in the grave. People who prayed for us, who are now gone, God is still answering their prayers. Have you ever thought about, you're not here this morning because you're so smart, because there's some people smarter than you in prison. Uh, there's some people better and smarter than you in an ICU this morning. No, you're not here because you're so good, no. Somebody prayed for you. 
I wish I had somebody that believed that. Somebody asked God to bless you. Somebody begged God to keep you strong. Somebody prayed that God would open a door and, 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 and you're blessed uh, more than you deserve because God is still answering the prayers of people who are gone and in their grave. And all of those prayers are still being answered right now because God is faithful to a thousand generations. God's going to bless your children. God's going to bless your grandchildren. Because David said, I've been young. I wish I had some Bible readers here. And now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. God will take care of you. I wish you'd say that wherever you are in your house. God will take care of you. Won't he take care of you? God will provide for you. God will put food on your table. God will make people who don't even like you bless you. God will open the door that somebody tried to close in your face. And sometimes salvation is not what God uh, 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 allows to happen to you but when God keeps from happen from it keeps salvation keeps things from happening to you church God loves us and because he loves us he performs on our behalf God's always up to something in the lives of his children and finally God's faithfulness God's faithfulness is demonstrated in God's promises to his people. In verse 9, we read, Therefore, know that the Lord your God, the faithful God, the Lord your God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. God keeps his promise because his name is at stake. Huh. God keeps his promise because his nature is at stake. I remember the story where God was about to destroy a number of people and Moses came and, and said, but God, God, what will the world think about you? What would the people, what would others think about you? His name and his nature is at stake. You see, friends will fail. But God is faithful. Family will fail. But God is faithful. Funds will fail. But God is faithful. Feelings will fail. But God is faithful. There have been some people you were friends with who said they'd be with you to the end. But when the storm came, they left you by yourself. But God will get in the boat with you in the middle of the storm. And God will ride through, uh, with you through the storm. And, when, and, and, and then he'll make your enemies your footstool. He'll prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He'll let you ride by those who thought you weren't going to make it in your brand new car. Oh, I wish I had somebody help me. And people will be looking at you on Sunday morning and they'll be wondering, well, why are you so full of joy? And, and why are you so full of peace? And, and, and they hate you and they're wondering why, why you're so calm. Uh, they, 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 they can't stand to see you and they're wondering, why do you have this joy all over you. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because you don't have anything to do with my joy. You don't furnish my peace. I'm not at this church because uh, you're here. I woke up this morning with my sound mind. And you see, friends will fail. But God is faithful. Family will fail. But God is faithful. You can't pick your family. You can't pick your friend. You can pick your friends, but not your family. You can't pick your mama, your drunk uncle, your crackhead cousin. Uh, but, but, but thank God that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. And thank God that I've got a friend who sticks closer than my own brother. That person will never leave me nor forsake me. There's times that your money will fail. I need somebody here who's got this testimony like myself that you've had, you've had more month 
then you've had money. But some way, somehow, God will let you ride on fumes until you get paid on Friday. I'm talking to somebody here, like myself, who's been down to the last dime. And the Lord stepped right in, right on time, to let you know that when it looks the darkest, morning will come. Won't he do it? Won't God take care of you? Will he not do it? Won't God make a way for you? Won't he stretch that little bit till you can do better? God is faithful. And then sometimes, sometimes, sometimes feelings will fail. You felt one way 10 years ago and you feel different now. And then you might have to say, if I had known then what I know now, I would have left that joker right where I met him. But through it all, God has been faithful. Sometimes you're without a job, but you never miss a meal. Because God knows how to provide for his children. And so you see, the reason that some of us have so much joy in, this, in the morning, and the reason some of us have so much joy this morning is because we didn't hold grudges. We don't keep stuff hidden in the dark. We confess it to God. We let it go because life is too short to be hating folks and mad with folks about stuff that you can do nothing about. Just turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to God. And then give God the praise. And then watch how God will send a breakthrough. God will send a miracle. Because when praises go up, when praises go up, the blessings of God come down. Can you take just one minute where you are and lift your hands and start to praise God. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We release all of those things. Father, we've, we've learned through this uh, season that life is too short, Father. We have no time for that. As a matter of fact, I declare that as healing and restoration comes into my heart, those that I hate it, I hate no more. I love the same manner in which you chose to love us. I choose to love them now give God a praise right where you're at hallelujah you got to stop being miserable you got to stop being unhappy stop coming to church frowning and and being sour God is faithful God is good to us everything I have God gave me everything I know God taught me and I'm glad to be in his presence just one more time and if God if nobody else wants to give God any praise because I came this morning on purpose I came this morning determined with my mind made up that I'm going to thank God for what he's already done and, uh, and, and, uh, and now here's why here's why I thank God for for what he's already done. You got to hear this. Here's why. Because praise, praise is the rent you pay for blessings that you've already received. Uh, you got to get that. Praise is the rent you pay for blessings that you've already received. And that's what praise is. It's the rent you pay for the house you're living in, for the car that you're driving, for the good health and strength that you have, for the amazing job that you're working on, for food and, and appetite. That's what you praise God for. Praise is rent for what God has already provided. You got to get that. Now here it is, here it is. Some of us this morning are behind in our rent payment. Yeah, some of us this morning are behind in our rent payment. God was good to you on Monday and, 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 and you didn't thank him. God bless you Tuesday and, and, and still you didn't thank him. God made a way Wednesday and you were too busy to say, thank you, Lord. God provided you uh, for you on Thursday and you were too much in a hurry to thank him. God opened that door on Friday. You got too busy to say hallelujah. God was good to you all day yesterday and you were too busy to tell God thank you. But this morning, 
is a new day. You have a fresh opportunity, and it's time to get caught up on your rent. It's time to get caught up on your praise. It's time to get caught up on your thankfulness. Get caught up with your rent payment and start telling God, thank you, thank you for just being so faithful to me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for providing for me. Thank you for making a new way. Thank you for the parents I had. Thank you for the neighborhood I played in. Thank you for the food and the supplies. Thank you for the house I was raised in. Thank you for the car I drive. But more, there's more to thank him for than that. And those are just material things. But if I lose all that I, all the stuff I have today, if I lose everything I have today, I've still got things to thank you for, Father. Thank you that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Thank you that he was raised in Nazareth. Thank you that he died. Didn't he die? Didn't God die for us? Thank you that he died. But early on a Sunday morning, he arose. Didn't he arise? He arose. So just tell him, Thank you for my salvation. Somebody this morning is in need of some encouragement. Please hear me. Somebody this morning is in need of encouragement. Somebody might need help with an amen in this season. Why don't you lend them your amen? Why don't you lend them one of your hallelujahs. And both of you come together and say, thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you because Jesus is just all right with me. I said, Jesus is just all right with me. Isn't Jesus just all right with you? And so this morning, in my closing. Maybe we had to sit around this, your table, your home, and begin to discuss the faithfulness of God. I want you to look around. And it would be so easy to see what we do not have, especially in this season. But because of the faithfulness and the greatness and love of God, you've been able to learn that you can make it with what you have. And what you have has been supplied to you and blessed you by God. God doesn't change, my friend. God loves us so much. Even now, whether you feel it or not, we're covered by His wings. Even now, whether you sense it or not, he is our refuge and he's our strong tower. Sure, we're in a storm, but we have an anchor that'll cause us to be unmovable and will not sink. And there's a characteristic about God that I love, and I love so many is the fact that in my life, He's been so faithful. He was faithful in my deathbed years ago. He was faithful through the mess up of my marriage. He's been faithful. So faithful. And maybe there's the kind of time where you need to take some reflection. Says, what's my relationship with God with? Am I standing strong? Am I grateful for his faithfulness? There were 10 lepers. He healed them all. Only one came back. Are you like the other nine? Or are you like the one that came back to thank God? Now if you're sitting there this morning, you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let's do this thing. You've heard this invitation before, but you've never responded. You've always said, well, maybe another time. Or, 
when the time is right or it's never going to happen. When the time is right now, in the midst of this season, you can have the greatest move of God in your life through his saving grace and his saving power. If you've never asked God to come into your life, repent of your sins, ask them to be a savior. Wherever you're at, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, you've been so good to me in the midst of everything. Even while I was out there in my mess, your son, Jesus, died for me. While I was yet a sinner, he died for me. I've been hearing so much about you all these years. And I've realized, I need you, Jesus. I need you in my life. I want to ask you, Father, to repent, uh, to forgive me of my sins as I've come to repent. And I've come with a humble heart. I'm not coming out of fear of the world or the fear of the seas. I'm coming because I fear the Lord. I, he's so awesome. He's so phenomenal. God is. And so Jesus come. From this day on, I want to live for you. Thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. If this is the first time you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've got avenues by where you can contact us, DCCI. We'd like to further pray for you and help you in every area that we can. There are churches all over this country, all over the city that you can contact. Share with them. I've given my life to Christ and let them rejoice with you. We love you. God bless you. We're excited about what God is doing. We look forward to seeing you again. But look at me. Look at me and hear this. Stay blessed. Have a good day.